Hello everyone, I'm bringing you a video today talking about this. This is of course an example of the British Army's Mark I lightweight combat body armour. We've seen this previously on the channel in videos dealing with Gulf War kit, generally in the Desert DPM cover. And we've looked at a trial example of the lightweight combat body armour as well. I wanted to make a standalone video talking about this in a bit more detail and also with the temperate DPM cover, as opposed to the Desert DPM cover, just to give that contrast. The design is basically the same but made in a different camouflage material. There were other covers made for this, of course, notably UN Blue. It's just another example. The lightweight combat body armour is basically a, a late Cold War development which was intended to introduce a pattern of body armour which was suitable for use in combat. Prior to this, in the post-war years, the British had experimented with, with body armour in various different settings. Obviously there were Second World War and even earlier examples of body armour in use, but we'll talk about the post-war years here. The first experience with body armour of a similar concept to this, that is to say a ballistic filler inside a cover. Uh, so the similar you know, plates or uh, a ballistic nylon filler, generally speaking, were seen in Korea and US body armour, both US Marine Corps pattern and US Army pattern body armour was issued to the British Commonwealth Division in the very late days or latter days of the Korean War for use when going out on patrol. And the British would then go on to manufacture the US Army's pattern, the M9052A, uh, to a limited degree. Uh, you see British manufactured uh, versions of that uh, body armour. And after that, the use of body armour in combat really dropped off. Of course, body armour was then reintroduced for troops serving in Northern Ireland on a large scale. A large number were purchased from the US for that purpose. Various different covers were introduced and of course there was then the development of body armour for use in that environment and that led to Eniba, the improved Northern Ireland body armour, which included front and rear plates, it was quite heavy, and was designed for use underneath the combat uniform and that was introduced in the early 1980s. It was deemed that that particular form of body armour was not suitable for use in combat, it was deemed to be too bulky, too heavy, and so the lightweight combat body armour began development and we've seen a, a, an example of trials example of that previously on the channel. Of course it really gets its baptism of fire in the Gulf War at the very end of the Cold War and from then on of course body armour has been a key part of combat equipment, combat uniform. So it uh, sort of uh, presaged that introduction of body armour more generally for use in combat which has been seen through to the modern day. So the lightweight combat body armour is an improvement on a Niebuhr in terms of weight. Um, the filler in this, I've actually seen various different sources claim different compositions for the filler. Some say Kevlar, some say ballistic nylon. I lead towards ballistic nylon. If anyone can clarify that, I'd be very interested. How many of these sources are just parroting other sources they've seen? I'd be interested to know. I've not found the initial spec for this. I've not been able to find the initial spec for this, the, the specification for the filler. So uh, as I say, just some confusion there on my part. I'm probably looking in the wrong place. So if someone could clarify whether the filler is ballistic nylon or Kevlar, I'd be interested to know. I'm currently leaning towards ballistic nylon, but I'd be happy to be corrected on that. And the filler, which we're going to look at shortly, uh, is uh, contained within this outer cover. And this, of course, allows it to be worn with different camouflage patterns as an outer garment. So the Aniba, the Improved Northern Ireland Body Armour, is designed for a wear underneath the combat jacket. The trial version of this, which we've looked at, was in a plain green, similar to the Aniba cover. Um, potentially was intended to be worn underneath the combat jacket or combat smock. This, uh, the actual issue version of lightweight combat body armour is definitely intended as wear, for wear as an outer uh, layer, hence having a camouflage cover. And obviously you have the, the temperate DPM cover here, and you've also seen the desert DPM cover that's turned up previously on the channel when talking about Gulf, Gulf War kit, as already mentioned. So the cover itself, and we'll talk about the cover first of all before we, we remove the filler from this. I've noted there's a slight size disparity between the, the cover and the filler, but uh, not been able to find a filler suitable in terms of size for this, uh, this cover. So uh, that's something I'm looking out for. The front here, we have two pockets. We have a, a large utility pocket here, and then a, a dressing pocket here. Also another utility pocket, other bits and pieces could be carried in there if required. It looks like someone's had something taped up onto the front here at some point. Looks potentially like the residue of uh, gaffer tape there, so it's possible that, uh, or uh, uh, duct tape, so it's potential someone, potentially someone's had something on there and then written on it. It's quite common to see names and blood groups and so forth written onto these uh, as required. Uh, certainly in the Gulf, that was very common. Down the front here, we have a central opening, and we can see here this is cleverly designed. In fact, as we saw on the trial version, 
This is cleverly designed to ensure that the front always overlaps. We don't have any zips or anything, which had been a feature of early uh, body armour used in Northern Ireland. The uh, three-quarter collar body armour, indeed the M1952A, had metal fixtures and fittings, and obviously it was important to remove those. They can be carried in uh, if something does penetrate the body armour and uh, add to the seriousness of a wound. So no metalwork or anything, just Velcro here to close the front of the cover. And we have the outer Velcro flap, but you can see we have two Velcro tabs here, which means that this section of the body armour doubles over and is then doubly secured with that Velcro flap down the front there, as you can see. Moving this round to look at the right hand side here, you can see how this adjusts in. So there are openings at the side as well, and this uh, allows you to adjust this in. In theory, there should always be an overlap underneath the arm as well to give that protection there. You have two straps, which again, attach with touch and close or Velcro there, as you can see. These straps pass through a plastic ring at the back here and then double back. So you can pull on those to tighten this in. When you're wearing it, it's very easy to pull them both in and adjust it in. So it's very easy to adjust as you're wearing this, adjust it in correctly to fit you uh, effectively and offer that protection. So that's an important part of the design. You have those two adjustments there at the side, which makes sure that the side here is doubled over, provided you're wearing the correct size. You'll have a double layer of uh, the protection down the side there where this opening is. So you, you know, have a, a dangerous gap there uh, where something could penetrate. Looking at the back here, you can see that plastic ring is attached with a piece of elastic, which gives some flexibility to the top opening. Obviously, you need some uh, flexibility there in for freedom of movement, and that piece of elastic there allows for that. The bottom one here is just fixed, and you can see from these, you have nylon straps which pass right around the back here. Stitched to the uppermost of these, we have a clip, uh, a uh, Nexus-type buckle there, and a little plastic ring there to keep the strap on this out of the way. And you, on some of these, you will find a belt loop on the back here, often removed. In this case, it's been removed. That's the purpose of having this clipped in place. You'd find a belt loop here, which could be used to a loop over an equipment belt uh, if worn, if required. But generally, you see these removed and just have the, the buckle left. Sometimes you actually see the strap cut off as well. We are missing the belt loop element at the back there. Otherwise, very plain, as you can see. We won't bother having a look at the left-hand side here. I will turn this inside out now, just so you can see the inside face of this. And we'll have a look at the label as well. Looking at the inside of this, you can see those Velcro or touch and close squares there where the opening is closed down the front and then the flap which comes down over the top of that to secure this. You can also see kind of at the side, but on the front here, these nylon straps here. These are basically stops to prevent the body armor being pulled too wide apart under the arms. And it means that you get that double layer over the joint here. So you always have ballistic nylon overlapping itself here at the side, thanks to these two stops, which prevent it from pulling uh, too far apart, even if the straps are adjusted right out. So that's an important part of the design in terms of maintaining that protection right around the sides of the torso as well. Looking at the side here, you can see how that inner part of the, the side of the body armor comes in and does overlap here with this section and those two straps, as already mentioned, to prevent this from pulling apart. Otherwise, not a lot more to see here, but you can clearly see that overlap here with the inner section of the body armor overlapping at the side there. And then looking at the back of the interior, we have the label up in the collar here. And we'll have a close up look at that in just a moment. But we have the opening here where the body armor filler is fitted within the cover. And this also closes with touch and close. We'll just open this up here. And you have an important thing here, which is the label of the filler, which is a different size than what we'll see on the, uh, the label of the cover in just a moment. But we have here important, this filler must be inserted so that this label is visible through opening in back of cover. So this ensures that the, the filler is fitted into the cover correctly. Uh, so this faces against the back when it's worn the right way out, of course. And if you open up this opening, you should see this label inside. And we'll see this in more detail when we turn this inside out. We'll have a look at both labels. There's another label on the filler which shows up if you've got it the wrong way around. So we'll see that in just a minute when we have a look at the filler in a bit more detail. We'll close that up now. And then we have the label for the cover up in the collar here. We'll have a look at that in more detail now. This is a little faded, but hopefully you can see this reads cover combat body armor, lightweight Mark one, temperate DPM. You then have the NATO stock number, and then you have to be worn with filler, combat body armor, lightweight Mark one, and the details underneath there. We then have a, an ink mark over the top of that CHTP, but you have the size details there of 180, 116, and you'll see the filler is actually smaller than that in this instance. And then you have further detail underneath there, which is a little bit 
I'll have to think the manufacturer there, but I can't quite read that, can't make that out on the label. You then have a place where you can write in your name and number, and we have uh, the remnants of a name there, Jock, written underneath over the top of the washing the care instructions at the bottom of the label there, as you can see. So here we have the filler, and this was actually used with a few different designs of body armour cover, um, just to note that here. You can't see the ballistic material itself, it's covered with this plastic outer cover, which is heat sealed around the edge here. You see it's actually reinforced with cloth, you can see the, the lines running through it here, and you can see the odd thread loose at the end here, the odd white thread. The reason for looking at this is it gives you an idea of the shape of the filler, and we can also see, we'll also see the labels on this which show uh, whether this is fitted correctly in the cover or not. So at the front here you have the two front panels, the panels that come round under the arm are flapping out to the side here as you can see, but they come round to make this into basically a waistcoat uh, of the, uh, for, for the body armour uh, itself. So we'll turn this round now and have a look at the back and then we'll see the label there and then I'll actually turn it the wrong way out. Uh, as it is here, this is the correct way out on the body. If it was within the cover, this would be correct. I'll turn it the other way out and we can see the other label which tells you when this is incorrectly fitted. So looking at the back of the filler here, you can see the wings which come out to each side, which when they're within the outer cover, obviously come around under the armpits like this to give protection around to the sides. This is the side which faces outwards. So the opening within the cover is normally against the back. So we have a label here and if this is fitted incorrectly, this would be visible in the opening. So if the whole thing was the other way around, the other way out, this label would be vis visible in the opening, which faces the back. So this label here gives you the warning. And the warning is, this filler is fitted incorrectly if the label is visible through the opening in the outer cover. So this is a foolproof system in theory, because you have this label here, and as we'll see in a moment, you have another label, which gives all the sizing details and so forth on the other side. And on that label, it states that you should be able to see that label when this is fitted correctly. So when the cover is on, as I say, obviously the back of this is plain, there's no opening here. The opening is on the other side facing against the back and that's where the other label is. So we'll turn this the other way out now and have a look at that label in detail. So this is now basically fitted incorrectly. If the cover was on this, this filler would be the wrong way around. And you can see the folds in the side here are the wrong way now, basically they want to fold that way and you'd have to fold them this way. The label here is normally against the back inside the cover, of course, but you can see the details here. We'll have a look at this in close up now. You can see the label here, and at the very top, we have the lot number stamped. On the right hand side, we have the contract number, SL34B contract number there. You then have the designation of this at the top, underneath the lot number, filler, combat, body armor, lightweight mark one. The NATO stock number and other details there as well. You have the height, uh, chest, the size information there of 170, 100. The name and number, the area to write the name and number in, and something was written in here in the past, but has somewhat faded, unfortunately. Then you have the manufacturer, which is CQC, the Chelsea Quilt Company. And then you have the warning, or the, uh, the, the statement here that this label should be showing. Important, this filler must be inserted so that this label is visible through opening in back of cover. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this. I say nice to show this off in the DPM, the temperate DPM cover rather than the desert DPM, which we've seen previously in various videos dealing with this, looking at uh, Gulf War kit. As I say, uh, a, an innovative design, uh, essentially introduced around the same sort of time that the US Army were introducing the new PASGAT system. So it's that improved protection for the soldier which was appearing at the end of the Cold War and would then set the pattern of future developments, of course, with the extensive use of body armour going forward from the Gulf War onwards. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this. If you have and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and would like to see more, if you really like my uploads and would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as I always say, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.